Hello and welcome to our daily news program. Let's kick off our news with the top stories. The Army General Station Gere Haji for staff of the People's National Army pays a working and inspection visit to the headquarters of the Air Force Command. It is the International Day for the Awareness and the Fight Against Mines. Algeria is sparing no effort in the research and destruction of more than 11 million mines planted by the French colonizer. The expansionist ideology of Morocco pushes the Mahzen to try and take lands from the neighboring countries, namely Mauritania, Western Sahara and Algeria. And Algerians are embracing new habits on iftar as we will walk on the seashore tonight where many citizens prefer to break their fast. Good evening and welcome back. We kick off our news with cooperation. On the sidelines of the annual session of the Ivorian Parliament, the President of the National People's Assembly was received by the Ivorian President Al Hassan Ouattara. He was also received along with other heads of parliament and the participating delegations by the President of the Ivorian Council of the Nation, Jinot Aousou Kwadjou, as part of consolidating parliamentary joint cooperation. And the President of the National People's Assembly held discussions with his Ivorian counterpart Adama Biktogo, discussions that centered on the bilateral relations. Biktogo hailed on the occasion Algeria's role in consolidating peace and stability in the African continent. As part of his visits to the different to the different components of the People's National Army, the Army General Station Gereha, Chief of Staff of the People's National Army, paid on Tuesday a working and inspection visit to the headquarters of the Air Force Command. Report by Ines Gillow. After the welcoming ceremony, accompanied by Major General Mohamed Laraba, Commander of the Air Forces, the Army General observed a minute of silence in memory of the martyr Amir Rujait Hamouda, Commander of the 3rd Historical Province, whose name is borne by the headquarters, and laid a wreath of flowers in front of his commemorative stele before reciting the Fatiha or the opening chapter of the Holy Quran in his memory and that of the valiant Shuhada. At the beginning, the Army General held a meeting with the executives and the personnel of the Air Force Command, where he delivered an orientation speech, followed by the personnel of the Air Force units via video conference. يبقى دوما وبصفة كبيرة يمثل أساس كل تفوق. وأساس كل نجاح وأنه مهما بلغ المستوى التقني والتكنولوجي The General of the Army underlined that the High Command of the People's National Army is constantly working to combine the human factor, which is the basis of success, and that whatever the technical and technological level of the equipment and the various weapon system, the decisive factor is the judicious use of the equipment provided. He also stressed that our main endeavor is to combine the qualified and competent human factor with modern equipment and aircraft equipped with the latest weapon system. Army General also reaffirmed that our Air Force is also prepared to assume their professional responsibilities with the required know-how and the professionalism required by the vital role of the Air Force in the modern battle, as well as the commitment and honor of belonging to the People's National Army, the worthy heir of the National Liberation Army. <laughs> ودور سلاح الطيران في المعركة الحديثة وبكل الحماس والاندفاع اللذين يثيرهما في النفس شرف لانتساب لصفوف الجيش الوطني الشعبي سليل جيش التحرير الوطني فالرفع من المردودية القتالية والعملية لسلاح الجو لدينا هو المطلب الملح الذي يتعين على مستخدمين في القوات الجوية كل في موقع عمله ونطاق تخصصه 
The Army General also hailed the Air Force pilots and members of their crews, who were honored by the President of the Republic, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Minister of National Defense, a few days ago for the outstanding capabilities and high skills they demonstrated while performing their duties. He also added that increasing the combatant operational performance of our Air Forces is an urgent requirement that our Air Force personnel must achieve in order to completely control our airspace and to constantly adapt to the developments in modern warfare. <laughs> نظير القدرات الفائقة والمهارات الرفيعة التي أبدوها خلال تنفيذ مهامهم. Then the Army General listened to the interventions and proposals of the executives and personnel who on this occasion reiterated their unwavering loyalty to their homeland Algeria. At the end, Army General followed a presentation by the Commander of the Air Forces on the various activities related to the progress of the implementation of the Air Force Development Plan. In this regard, Army General gave a series of guidelines and orientations relating in particular to the necessity of continuing efforts of preparation for combat by the units and individuals in accordance with the plans and programs adopted while ensuring the periodic maintenance and the perfect aircraft and major available means. The International Day for Mine Awareness and Algeria's role in fighting these instruments of death topped the conference organized by the Mujahideen Ministry. The Algerian people suffered due to these mines left by the French colonial authorities. More details with Najah Tayyar. By a mine buried by French soldiers during colonialism, he lost his leg. He's one among thousands of other victims of anti-personnel mines sown by the French army along the border strips in the east and west of the country. A large number of anti-personnel mines have been laid everywhere, whether east or west, with the extension of electrified barbed wires. According to an official French report, 11 million anti-personnel mines have been hidden underground by the French army, but the real numbers, which must be much higher, have not been unveiled. To overcome the revolution fighters, the colonial France had installed along the borders two electrified lines strewn with minefields to cut off the freedom fighters from their rear bases. We were 16 to 65 Mujahid to cross the barbed wire and the minefields to pass the border towards Tunisia in order to recover the ammunition. We had to show determination despite the imminent danger. International Mine Awareness Day is an opportunity to remember the suffering of thousands of Algerian victims as well as the crucial role played by the People's National Army in the cleaning up mine border areas. Since independence, the People's National Army has cleared mines and destroyed anti-personnel mines, which have long caused death and terror. In December 2016, Algeria completed the destruction of its stockpile of mines before the deadline set by the Ottawa Convention. However, these crimes and so many others committed by the colonial France have always gone unpunished. On the same occasion, Mishael Shahid Association and Al Mujahid Daily Newspaper, in coordination with the Sahrawi Embassy in Algeria, commemorated the World Day of Mines Victims. The symposium was attended by researchers and journalists. Abroad, the Western Saharan conflict will be on the agenda of the UN Security Council on April 19th. The situation will be discussed in a context marked by the growing hostilities between Morocco and the Polisario Front. The Security Council will also tackle the UN mission for the holding of a referendum in Western Sahara and will listen to a report that will be presented by its head Alexander Ivanko and the, the personal envoy of the UN Secretary General. General Stefan de Mistura. The expansionist vision of Morocco has been a reality over the past years by trying to annex other territories beyond their borders. The numerous examples of attempts are unveiled in this report compiled by Melissa Kobash. 
Expansionist Morocco has always been enchanted by the theses of Great Morocco, which extends from Tangier to Saint Louis in Senegal, as it was defended in 1955 by Al Al Fassi. In 1960, Morocco opposed the independence of Mauritania, a member country of the United Nations. The annexation of Mauritania was its obsession. It took 12 years for it to finally recognize the independence of this neighboring country. It was all possible thanks to Algiers' summit in 1972, which gathered President Wari Boumedien, Mauritanian President Mukhtar Wildada, and the Moroccan king Hassan II. The summit put an end to 12 years of denial, during which the Moroccan government had a minister of Mauritanian affairs. In 1963, Morocco attacked its neighbor, Algeria, which back at that time still didn't have neither army nor weapons, in an attempt to annex part of its territories. And by this, adding 800 persons killed by the Moroccan army to the a million and a half martyrs of the Revolution War, killed by the French colonizer. In 1975, Morocco striked again by occupying Western Sahara, where Spain is still the administrative power. It even proposed to Mauritania the division of the Western Sahara because it was in its territory a country would never share its territory with another. The kingdom wants to divert opinion on human rights violations, poverty, malnutrition, slavery, and so much more. The Moroccan regime can get out of this mess. Politically, it has lost its image. Financially, it's over in debt and under the control of international institutions. The Mahzen made the Moroccan kingdom a narco-trafficking state and corruption far from any form of diplomacy. And the Moroccan Social Front called for the holding of several sit-ins next Saturday all across the country so as to denounce the high cost of living and social injustice. It called on the population to flock to the sit-ins and make the Mahzen find solutions to the chaotic social situation. According to the Social Front, the high cost of living and the deterioration of the citizens' purchasing power is a result of the government's hostile policy towards the citizens and the front as well. They also demanded the release of all political detainees and stop marginalizing and discriminating the inhabitants of the countryside. Several organizations and trade unions called for a total mobilization during this month of April to firmly denounce the deaf ear policy adopted by the Mahzen regime. Back to Algeria, Sonal Gas Company already unveiled a report and a report record an export record in 2022, reaching approximately 217 million euros in several sectors. Further details about this telling success with Melissa Kabaj. A forum was held at the Orassi Hotel under the motto National Integration at the heart of Sonangaza strategy. Members of the government, as well as public and private economic actors, were present during the event. We are an electrical group that gathers no less than 158 industrial units, 13 electrical laboratories, 65 large companies, 58 design offices, and more than 6,500 small assembly and production companies in the electrical field. The participants didn't fail to underline that Sonargas Group was one of the first companies to adopt the integration policy by reaching nearly 83% in manufacturing and electrical transformation. This move will eventually allow us to reduce the import bill, hoping by 2025 to reach 90% of integration. The Sonal Gas Group has developed considerably in the production and support of small and medium enterprises. As for us, the public authorities, we will support the group's integration strategy, which we have put as one of our priorities, which is to achieve an industrial integration rate exceeding 70 percent in Algeria. The group aims to expand its network by counting on clean energies as well as energy security by cooperating with national and international companies as well as the professional sectors with which it has signed agreements by the end of the event. 
Enjoying the iftar meal on the beach in Tipaza complex is a new habit being adopted by Algerians to enjoy both the meal and the scenery. The CED complex opens its doors with a free entry offer and proposes new formulas in this blessed month of Ramadan for the benefit of families, as you will see with Najah Tayyar. An amazing iftar by the sea, offering a relaxing scenery by the equestrian and the tourist complex in Tipaza. That's how this family have preferred to celebrate their granddaughter's birthday over a good meal. I am here to spend good time and celebrate my birthday. It is a nice place here where we can relax and children can play. For this month of Ramadan, the catering service of the complex provides different formulas to meet the demands of the customers. In the blessed month, we receive a large number of customers in the restaurant where we offer different menus. Some customers book different areas in the complex, such as dinner on the terrace and birthday parties on the beach. After the iftar, some families gather around a table in the greenery to sip a tea. The youngest prefer to play ball or take advantage of the play areas before the start of the school year. It is magnificent here. This Ramadan, the entry is for free. It is very good area for the families to spend time and have a good ambience for the children. Our family came here after the iftar. I like it very much here. A singular village where nature, modernity and tradition combine to present a perfect space to spend a pleasant and convivial holidays. And with that we come to the end for today's program. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.